Talking with Dan Peterson. Hi, Dan. How are you this morning? Good morning. Welcome to Austin. Uh, welcome to Austin. And you are with Pitsco Education, one of my favorite uh, companies in the whole wide world. Pitsco, because you guys are like science related, and I love the science stuff. So look at that, man. Here's just an idea. This book's been around since I think 1978. You guys should have updated then. Well, we're looking that, at that it, particular book. Yeah, yeah, we still have rock. Got Cha cha. There, we go. there it is. Uh, my particular group takes all that stuff, the fun stuff, right. and we put it together to align with state standards, and we build a curriculum. Well, let's talk a little bit. Let's talk just first of all, what is Pitsco? What do they do? What, what, is the, what does the company do? Pitsco Education designs equipment, curriculum, that we can put something in the teacher's hands to supplement what a traditional teacher might look for. Okay, and you do for not only uh, science, but I notice you also do math. And uh, here's an idea. This, okay. You can see this list of over 125 topics that we've designed that all align with the TEKS. Okay. These are high interest STEM topics. So we don't teach math separate and apart from science. We integrate them. We've been doing it for years. Okay. And now with STEM, we build products that these kids can use to make it relevant. I want to just show you. Okay, give me an example. Yeah. Okay. Here's an example. Of an, one of our rockets, we have bottle rockets, tooth, toothpicks, uh, there's a straw rocket. This is interesting. This one we want to do outside, but I will do it for the audience. All right, right, there Here's we go. The gauge. I'm okay. going to start. With so, what, it. wait, okay, so let, let's stop a second. Okay, so what we would be doing this lab for students that uh, might have troubles with what, for instance? Uh, measurement. Measurement, okay. We know measurement's a challenge. Right. Uh, there's a lot of physics in here. We talk trajectory. We talk altitude. We okay. talk force. Woo! Okay. So what I'm going to do is, and there's a whole lesson that comes with this, obviously. Right, right. And So the curriculum's all for this. is all written. It's not just equipment. There's right. lesson plans that are written with it. We do have it. Just if the teacher wants to do it, we find then, though, that if you and I both did it, we were both doing it differently. One of us might hit more teaks than the other one. So we want to maximize right. the equipment the student's experience. Okay. So in this case, we want to do this one outside, but this is an example of a air rocket we have. You can see the pressure sure going the up. Pressure's going up. With a bicycle pump. Right. And I don't know how tall this ceiling, what do you think this ceiling is? I know, let's be? see if we can hit the ceiling. Okay, here, well, I, I can put it through the ceiling. Well, let's Kim, not if do I that. No, let's not okay, do that. Okay, then we simply. Okay, so here's our rocket. We would take this outside. Okay, and we're going to. There we go. Oh, and it comes right back down. Yo, whoa. Whoa! There we go. See, we didn't hurt anybody. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so that's one. That's one example. So the students would measure. Students would uh, okay. Altitude. It comes with an altitude finder. Right. So we talk pressure. A lot of aerospace facts and figures we can build. In. Okay. It's all in the curriculum guide. Okay. I want to show you another thing here, Jim. That what we typically do. Let's say our school is having trouble. We'll just choose math or science. We'll choose okay. math. We typically go and look at the concepts that the kids are struggling in. And these are all aligned to the TEKS? Everything's okay. aligned to the TEKS. So okay. we know that measurement at the 8th and ninth grade specifically, measurement is a challenge. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go through the test and pull off the concepts that the kids struggle in. Right. And then I would choose topics across the top here that align with those concepts. So what we're doing, instead of putting a student back in the same book with the same teacher in the same <laughs> class and expecting them to get it the second time. That's the definition of insanity, exactly. right? Is that yeah, doing the same thing? That, I'm afraid we're doing it. We'll then put them into a lab and that looks something like this. Here's an example of four workstations. So the student would rotate after seven days from one workstation to the other, working with a different person, okay. and applying with it with this rocket, we, we always you see a bridge up bridges. there. We could be building a bridge. Yeah, I noticed that. Balsa bridges, one of your uh, products that you got there. Right. And it's fun. What we would do with this, you build it, and look at all the angles. So, so instead of it just, uh, instead of the product just being like a, an, an online remediation where the kids are just uh, going over the same topic and, and clicking the right answer right. or wrong answer, they're actually creating something different than they would actually be doing in the class to reinforce the topic that they're they're struggling with. Exactly. We keep the sit and click to a very, very small amount of time. So 50% of the time they're going through our curriculum, they're doing something with their hands. Okay. In this case, this is kind of interesting. The students spend all seven sessions to build a bridge. 
learning about angles. The history, there's a lot of history in there too. Now, is this a group activity? Is it a two students per two, two students a, or whole group? Okay. Either way, what they'll do is they'll build a bridge, and the culminating activity, and each of these has a culminating activity. They break the bridge. We'll hang weights on here and see which oh, okay. structure, holds which design holds the most. And there, the teacher can go in and talk about that. So they're taking angles, in this case, and making it real. Instead of just on a piece of paper, they're seeing why different angles will affect the weight in this case. You know, I had in, uh, in, in high school, I had a teacher, and we were doing trigonometry, and I could not for the life of me figure out why we needed to do trigonometry. And his answer to me was, well, maybe someday you'll build a bridge. There you go, <laughs> see? But what we try to do is make I it. haven't built any bridges, right. by the way, so... <laughs> but what we do is we make it relevant. Okay. We do the same with Algebra 1. I can choose a group of topics, again, from this long list. These are the seven-day topics. Right. I can choose a group of 12 of these that I know will address the standards for Algebra 1. So the kid that doesn't get it in the book, just like you didn't get it, now they go into a lab for Algebra 1 and they apply it with our rockets, for instance. That's one of the components of the rockets with it. Now I assume that uh, it's not just uh, Texas essential elements, uh, essential skills that you got, you, California, any right. state that you probably are, are every, in. Every state. You've got them aligned too. These labs that I'm talking about, we have about 4,000 of them across the country. Okay. Uh, so we address national standards. And it's interesting, Texas and Florida are pretty much the leading states when it comes to standards. So yes, we address all the standards and... We and won't tell California that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't. They get upset. <laughs> so therefore, yes, it does align with standards. Okay. Uh, and it aligns with the test. A lot of teachers saying a lot of these things these kids learn, these critical thinking skills, it's really what's coming off the test as that test slowly evolves now into something right. else. Okay, Dan, if somebody was interested in uh, looking a little bit more deeply into this uh, product, how, uh, what would they do? www.pitsco.com. Pitsco.com, and there it is right there, pitsco.com. And uh, if they wanted to talk to you, Dan, because you're such a good-looking guy, how would they get a hold of you? Uh, for you that reason, it's 512-567-9467 or dpeterson at pitsco.com. Okay, Dan, thanks for taking some time to talk to us about these awfully cool uh uh, lessons in science and math that Pitsco puts out. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. Good Thank seeing you. you.